Chapter 68. Finding a way to free Lo, EXP. 30 years ago, a young Bo was born into the family of Jean Sansai, a fisherman. His father was a down-and-out scholar with some literary talent, but nothing remarkable. In order to make a living, he had to resort to fishing and ferrying. His father was talented and named him Wuji. He hoped that he would grow up to be a man that was born in the world without any taboos to his name. Sean Wuji, burdened with the weight of his father's unfulfilled dreams, poured himself into his studies with an unrelenting fervor to obtain scholarly honors. He passed the elementary scholar examination in his ninth year, but failed the imperial scholar examination every time afterwards. He then started a family, but continued on a path of imperial examinations. At the same time, like his father, after starting a family and starting a career, he also gradually placed his hopes of passing the imperial examination on the next generation. He had a sister named Wu Yu. Her personality was in D, as her name suggested. She was naive and innocent. She often helped him grind nink and copy books. Influenced by him and their father, she became extremely well read and loved to read extensively. She was talented in literature and was even more outstanding than him, her brother. It was a pity that women could not take the imperial examinations. As such, his sister could only recite poems by the river for fun. However, she led a very carefree life. The family was not rich, but they were happy until his father ferried a rich scholar across the river one day. His younger sister, Wu Yu, happened to be on the shit. Her original naivety had turned into a flaw when she was immediately infatuated after a few words from the scholar, San Hu. The scholar was also talented in literature. The trip on the ship that day caused his younger sister to secretly fall in love with San Hu. Coincidentally, that rich young master was also interested in his sister, Wu Yu. He often appointed his father to ferry him across the river and, every time, his sister would follow him. As the young master of a rich family, San Hu was not only handsome, but also talented and rich. Hence his family did not have much objections to the two of them being together. Even if Wuyu could only marry into the rich family as a concubine, it was still a good outcome for her. However, it was from then on that the misfortune which will destroy his family began. After a while, as the two of them became more affectionate, the rich young master would often invite his sister, Wuyu, to go on outings. After a few times, her stomach became swollen with pregnancy. He and his father were furious. How could a woman's chastity be destroyed so casually? They immediately and to the Song family, where the rich young master was and asked Song Hu to marry Wu Yu to preserve her reputation as much as possible. Who would have thought that Song Hu, who had been flirting with his sister all this while, would suddenly turn against them and even berate them for making a fuss? To add fuel to the fire, he even gave them a sum of money and sent them away to settle the problem themselves. But how could the pair of father and son, who had studied books on morality and sageness all their lives, tolerate this? The second time they came to demand for accountability. Not only were they barred from seeing Son Hu, they were also beaten out by the eldest son of the Son family. This caused his parents to become egregiously injured, coupled with their extreme anger and despair. They lost their will to live and died overnight upon returning home. Given his stubborn nature, he could just accept the outcome of the situation and wanted to go to the government to seek a fair and just explanation. But who would have thought that the Song family had relations with the government? And upon catching wind of his complaints, directly assassinated his family in secret? His sister who had foolishly gone to look for Song Hu, to seek him out, was cruelly drowned in a well. He and his ten-month pregnant wife were also thrown into the river, both tied up inside of separate sacks. If he had not been strong enough to break free, he would have perished like his poor wife. Upon surviving, he began on the path of revenge and vendetta. Originally, it was very difficult for him who had nothing to come up with any form of revenge to avenge his family. But in his wildest dreams, he was actually blessed with an immortal root, which a passing master specializing in poison from Myojiang took a fancy to. The master then taught him the art of voodoo that he could utilize to finally exact his revenge. After obtaining voodoo and poison techniques, he used poison to stimulate his body's potential and his cultivation level increased rapidly. The title of Haiduzi was given to him when he finally became a master of poison. Other than entering the Tao of poison, he also encountered a fortuitous opportunity that had benefited him greatly. This happened when he entered the Thousand Poisons mountain range to refine poison. 
he had encountered danger and chanced upon an ancient cultivator's cave abode. This ancient cultivator was a powerful goo master. Just by relying on the treasures he obtained from the outsides of the abode, he managed to cultivate the body of the jade cicada and also got rid of the after effects of using poison to stimulate his body. He then refined himself into a goo corpse and his cultivation improved greatly in a short year. After his body was upgraded to the iron-skinned goo corpse a refined body that was comparable to the body of a cultivator from the perfected Khanate realm and his cultivation level had reached the late stage Shi refinement. He left the Thousand Poisons mountain range and returned to Silken City to take revenge. During this period of time, he also joined the Sky Demon Cult and aligned his plan of revenge with the flow of Sky Demon Cults, Operation, and in the process managed to obtain quite a bit of help to fulfill his revenge. Originally, everything had gone smoothly, but who would have thought that the Song family would produce a cultivation genius that would completely ruin his plan to exterminate the Song family entirely at the very last moment? After absorbing all of Hai Duzi's memories, Song Chi Sai as mixed feelings churned in his heart. Without him, Hai Duzi would have been the standard protagonist. He would have risen to prominence after his revenge and vendetta, and would have gone on to become a master of both Poison and Gu in the future. What a pity, unless the other party was powerful enough to seal his powers. He would definitely lose when he encountered an immortal like him. From the perspective of a third person, he pitied this guy. However, from the perspective of an involved party, not to mention how vicious Hai Duzi was, Song Shi would still choose to kill him even if he was a holy being. After returning to reality from Hai Duzi's memories, Song Shi's eyes quickly regained their clarity. Other than the shining light of rationality in his eyes currently, they had become even more profound. He looked at the alms bowl and the jade cicada's corpse on the ground and muttered. To fuse the soul with external objects is equivalent to cultivating a treasure body. It's very rare in the Qi refinement realm. It's comparable to being a genius who broke through the 11th or 12th level of Qi refinement. This guy was quite powerful. Standing up and looking at the Ans bowl Dharma treasure, Sanshi did not touch them. Instead, he made a hand seal. The Ans bowl shook and the dim light on the surface dissipated, revealing the empty space inside. A seven-colored centipede was entrenched inside. The seven-colored centipede, the fabled king of poison, this was also Hai Duzi's trump card. It's a pity that he didn't have time to release it before he died. Song Shi glanced at the Jade Cicada, which had landed 10 feet away from the alms bowl. If only he had given the other party just one more second just now, Hai Duzi would have been able to release his treasure. I was so close to experiencing the feeling of being poisoned to death, Song Shi said regretfully as the corners of his mouth curled up slightly. However, after failing to possess me, I devoured him instead. This fellow's memories have become a part of my knowledge base. Song Chi chuckled. From now on, he was no longer a noob cultivator. Through browsing through Hai Duzi's memories, not only did he learn many methods of Gu and poison, he also grasped all kinds of basic knowledge that a normal Qi refinement cultivator should have. This is how I can create opportunities for myself. As long as someone possesses me, I'll devour them in return. Then I'll obtain rich memories for doing nothing. Song Shi felt that he had found a way to gain EXP for free. Except that there probably wouldn't be many people who would resort to possessing him. Unless they were forced to a debt and like Hai Duzi. I'm so looking forward to the next person who possesses me. I haven't completely experienced the feeling of being possessed yet. As he was thinking about these strange thoughts, the fog around him suddenly began to fade. And the sounds from outside gradually came in. A fluctuation came from the formation plate controlled by his divine sense. Song Shi was stunned for a moment. The power of the spirit stone has been exhausted. If I had waited for a little longer, Hai Duzi would have had a chance to escape. He kept the alms bowl, picked up the broken jade cicada shell and threw it into the alms bowl. The seven-colored centipede's tentacles feelers as it woke up from its slumber. It emitted an excited fluctuation and rushed over to devour the empty shell crazily. It had no idea that it was eating its original owner. The more it ate, the more excited it became. After sealing the alms bowl, Sanchi turned around and made several hand seals. At the unmoving corpses of the goo corpses, condensing multiple fireballs and throwing them out, the flames burned and turned all the corpses into ashes. Destroying corpses was a basic skill that Sanchi felt immortal cultivators should have. 
from his point of view. The first reason was because he couldn't casually leave such dangerous trash lying around like that. And the second reason was to avoid his enemies using tactics such as the Jade Cicada to escape like Hi Doozy. After doing this, he walked towards the array disc. The array formation power was becoming weaker and weaker. The surrounding fog dissipated that a speed visible to the naked eye, revealing Liu Ruxu and the others. Liu Ruxu and the others were able to see Song Shi and the raging flames around him, but all the enemies had disappeared. 